We're going to go over miners and cofactors of entries of matrices and how to find them. This is a really important step in generally defining the determinant for square matrices. We'll go through two examples here, finding some miners and cofactors of three by three matrices, though we won't actually find all of them. That would just take too long. And then we'll finish by finding a miner and a cofactor of a four by four matrix, which will require finding the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, and for that we'll use a cofactor expansion. If you don't know what that is yet, don't worry, you'll see how it goes when we get there. Here's a definition taken straight from Elementary Linear Algebra by Howard Anton, link to the text in the description. If A is a square matrix, then the minor of entry AIJ is denoted by big M I J, and it's the determinant of the submatrix that remains after the ith row and the jth column are deleted from A. Meanwhile, the number negative one to the I plus J times that minor of entry A I J is denoted by C I J, and this is called the cofactor of entry A. I, J. And notice that the minor and the cofactor of an entry are both scalars. They're not matrices. However, we denote them with uppercase letters. It's a little unusual, but that's the convention. Also notice by definition, the cofactor of an entry will either equal the minor or it will be the negative of the minor of that entry. Now, instead of reading through the definition again to reiterate the details, let's just try using it. So here is a matrix A. Let's begin by finding the minor of the entry in the first row and the first column. So that's denoted M11. By definition, this is the determinant of the matrix that results when we eliminate the first row and the first column. So I've crossed off the first row and the first column, and the minor that we're looking for is the determinant of this resulting submatrix. The determinant of a two by two matrix, of course, is just the difference of the diagonals. So it's 7 times 4, which is 28, minus 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. And so this minor M11 is 29. The cofactor C11 we can now find easily. It's just negative 1 to the power of I plus J, the row, which is 1, plus the column, which is also 1. And then we multiply this by the minor of that entry, which we just found is 29. So the cofactor C11 is just equal to 29 because negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 is positive 1. So this is 29. For another example, let's find the minor 2, 3. We find this by eliminating row 2 and column 3, and then calculating the determinant of the remaining submatrix. So we just need to calculate the difference of the diagonals. This diagonal is 1 times 1, which is 1, and we subtract the product along this diagonal. That's negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. So this minor is equal to negative 5. For the cofactor, we just have have to raise negative 1 to the power of the row, which is 2, plus the column, which is 3, and multiply by the minor, which is negative 5. Negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1, so this will be the negative of negative 5, which is positive 5. You can see that it's not a very difficult thing to work out this negative. Its power will either be odd or even, which is determined by the sum of the row and column. If 2 plus 3 is odd, then we'll have this negative here. On the other hand, in a situation like this, we have 1 plus 1, which is even, so the negative just goes away. Let's do a couple more with this matrix here, so I'll use a different color. Let's begin by calculating the minor m13. So we eliminate the first row and the third column, then calculate the determinant of the resulting submatrix. That's just the difference of the products of the diagonals. 3 times 1 is 3, and we subtract 3 times 0, which is 0. So this minor is 3. 
the cofactor C13, since 1 plus 3 is even, the negative 1 to that power is just going to be positive 1. So the cofactor is just going to equal the minor, which is 3. One more, let's calculate the minor M22. We eliminate the second row and the second column and then calculate the determinant of the resulting submatrix. The product on that diagonal is 4 and we subtract the product on this diagonal, which is 0. So this minor is equal to 4. As for the cofactor, C22, 2 plus 2 again is even, so negative 1 to that power will just be positive 1. The cofactor is equal to the minor, which is 4. Minors and cofactors will be very useful for us. That's how you find them, but of course, it'd be a little bit more difficult with a bigger matrix. Let's do one example of that. Here is a 4x4 four four matrix. We are asked to find the minor M22 and the cofactor C22. So we begin by eliminating the second row and the second column, and we need to calculate the determinant of the remaining 3x3 three three submatrix. So by definition, the minor M22 will be the determinant of this submatrix, which I've written here for clarity. Now, you may or may not know how to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, but I'm going to show you how to do this using a cofactor expansion. We go over this in more detail in another lesson, link in the description, but it's pretty cool, so let me show you here. Oftentimes, the first way you would learn to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix would be eliminating the first row and first column and then calculating that determinant and then moving on to the second column and still in the first row and looking at this submatrix determinant and so on and you do some multiplication and some addition. That process is a cofactor expansion but it's not necessary to use the first row. We could use any row we want or any column we want. In this case, the second row would be pretty nice because it has a zero in it. And the cofactor expansion, which is just a way of finding the determinant, is just taking this entry in the row that we've selected, four, and then multiplying by its cofactor, which would be C21, because it's the entry in the second row and the first column. Then we just add the next entry multiplied by its cofactor, so 0 times C22. And then we add the next entry, 14, multiplied by its cofactor, which is C23. This is the determinant. And we'd get the same thing if we did this process with a different row, or even with a different column. Let's go through this calculation to find the determinant, and thus the minor. We begin with 4 multiplied by the cofactor of this entry. Now, the cofactor has that negative 1 to a power, remember, so let's just check that first. 2 plus 1 is 3, that's odd, so negative 1 to the 3 is going to be negative 1, that just means we're going to have a negative factor here. That comes from the cofactor, but we'll put it in front of the 4. Now, the rest of the cofactor is just the minor of this entry. We find that by eliminating row 2 and eliminating column 1 and then calculating the determinant of the resulting submatrix. That's just the difference of the products of the diagonals, so 1 times 2 minus 3 times 6. Then we add 0 times the cofactor of this entry. Whatever that cofactor is, of course, that's just going to be 0 once we do the multiplication. Then we finish with 14 multiplied by the cofactor of the entry in the second row and third column. Now again, 2 plus 3 is odd, so the cofactor is actually going to give us a factor of negative 1. So let's just change that plus 14 to a minus 14, and now we can calculate the minor of this entry. So we eliminate its row and eliminate its column. The determinant of the resulting submatrix is 4 times 3, which is 12, minus 4 times 1, which is 4. Finally, we have negative 4 multiplied by negative 16, which is positive 64. And then we have to subtract 14 times 12 minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8, and 8 times 14 is 112. So this is minus 112. 
this equals negative 48. And so that is the determinant of this three by three matrix. And thus that is the minor of the entry a22. And since 2 plus 2 is even, the cofactor C22 is also just going to be negative 48. And that's how you find the minor and the cofactor of an entry of a matrix. And also a sneak peek at how to find determinants using cofactor expansions. This is the general process that works for any square matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And if you find these linear algebra lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching. I'm a second.